Hello everybody, I am back with Brian from Anarchy Models and today we're Cheers. having a look at one of the bigger beasties that you brought along. Yeah. Right, so Brian, you're running a Kickstarter at the minute and you've got some new uh, creature feature stencils on there because people keep asking for them. So you've got a little sheet to show off some of what you've been working on. Yeah. So you've got to show it off so to begin with. on here, if I can get it back in the shot again. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our first creature feature one we did, the, the mottled in the middle here, HS16. Mm -hmm. um, in the other video, um, with the little dino, we did the uh, the blotchy, mm -hmm. uh, which is those two. So in this one, we are going to be doing the bigger mottled, which mm -hmm. is here, and the less mottled, which is here. So these dots are the same, in these two examples, the same size as these two different sizes here. There's just less of them, mm -hmm. so you'll get a different effect. Okay, cool. So these stencils look like this. So that is the less mottled mm -hmm. see the measurements there and this is the bigger mottled mm -hmm. so this is much larger than the other one very good for doing bigger dinos or even in combination with the others too mm -hmm. definitely so talking of bigger dinos yeah what do you bring us uh we have this big guy from mere miniatures ah He's pretty huge. Yeah, I'm seeing instantly some great areas to actually do some of that mottling along those wings. The wings is a prime candidate on here. You could probably pick out some of the areas on the body as well. Mm -hmm. But for this one, we're just going to do it on the wings because they're a really nice big flat area. Mm -hmm. Well, they're curved, which is good for stencils, but they're a smooth area for us to do the stenciling on. Yeah, so for laying down the, the high-speed stencils, big areas, yeah. smooth areas like that are good for it. Yeah. Uh, you. you if it's very heavily detailed, so something that's got like a furry model, for example, you, it doesn't really work because the pattern doesn't go in and around the, 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 the lines of the fur. Yeah, it's got a little space to bleed past. Yeah, on, on this, the skin, it, it's, it works okay, but furry models, it doesn't really work that mm -hmm. well. Um, or if it's really heavily detailed, um, mm -hmm. it works better where it's a bit smoother, so you pick out the areas where it's easy, like the big big muscle groups on the shoulders oh, yeah, or yeah. thighs or wings or things like that. Yeah, we well, see, looking at some of this, I'm, I'm looking at it going, could I do that as, like, orcs with some war paint on them? You know, just running down the big muscle groups. I'm sure arms. you could, with the, with the smaller sizes, that'd probably look quite cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, it's it's what I love about your stuff because I always look at it and go, "What miniatures would I use on that? What what way could I use this that would probably make Brian cry?" <laughs> no, I, I I'm always interested to see what people do with it. Sometimes people use it an entirely different way. Mm -hmm. About I found out not too long ago that there's a whole group of guys doing the custom fishing lure painting, uh -huh. and they're going crazy for the mottled stencils. Really? Yeah. Huh. So that they're they're painting all these really super realistic fish, which look really cool. Yeah. Um, and using my stencils to do it. So that's cool. And, and it's. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very cool to see other people using it as not how it was intended. I wonder which crazy uncle was sitting in his hobby shed and was going, I'm going fishing next weekend and I need a lure. I'm going to make one. And uh. <laughs> yeah, just that evil. <laughs> I'm assuming that. somebody was also into war games, started yeah. using it, then all his mates started using it, and then that was it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's quite interesting to see that happen. Yeah. It, it's cool to see how some things from the hobby and not from the hobby can transfer both out and in. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. All right, now, you've done a Blue Peter. Yeah, so we've got one here we did earlier. Yeah, which looks really cool. You've done all your airbrushing to it. So you can see we have lots of highlighting and shading. So I started off with the black mm -hmm. uh, black base coat. I've left a lot of the black showing through underneath. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the lighter colors have been mainly angled in from above, mm -hmm. leaving the rest underneath dark. Um, and then I've layered on a light color over the wings over the top. I've then used the transparent brown and red to kind of shade it back in again around the wings where the, the wing color had gone to the body. Mm -hmm. I can see um, you've even went down along the, the veins of the wing a little bit. Yeah, there. along the veins of the wing there just to shade it back in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but the colors we used are these. Oh. So I started off, uh, used a bit of burnt umber um, mm -hmm. to, over the black, over most of it to... to lighten up the, the black a bit and then I mixed in some of the scarlet red which mm -hmm. is that one and then added in some bloody red which is that one mm. and I then added a little bit of this in the end and I think that works better than trying to add white to it which would make it pink you use a yeah like a, a, a mustard a yellow color. works yeah. quite well um, and for the wings started off with dark earth uh, and then 
uh, dead flesh over the top of that. Mm. But again, you can just use any colours you want that are, are suitable. Um, mm. there's, there's a lot of some bone colours and things which are very similar to this. Yeah, there's one trick I learned years ago uh, painting is if I'm trying to do a really, really nice gold, I'll just throw like a, a nice brown in beneath it instead of going black. Yeah, yeah, that can work really well at doing a uh, burnt umber. Actually, again, that colour uh, mm -hmm. is actually really good as a base for doing gold. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that is a good trick. Yeah. It's, it's sometimes the the simplest little things. I never would have thought of it until a friend of mine showed me it, and then all of a sudden it was just like, ah, you yeah. like it, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, so after layering those on, building the colours up, mm -hmm. we ended up with uh, yes. big beastie looking something like this. Yeah, Mister Gribbly here. Um, obviously, you, once you've done all the stenciling and everything, you're still going to have to do some touch ups with brushes for the teeth and the horns and. Maybe some dry brushing on the scales. Yeah, um, those are the final details you yeah. also do. An yeah. airbrush is not a complete way to paint. No. Well, for some things, it can be pretty close. Really? Um, okay. You know, it depends on what it is. Yeah, okay. Um, but, yeah, for, for these, it, it will need um, other little details yeah, going tiny on. tiny details. Yeah. Okay, so, so... Let's do some stenciling on this guy. Yeah. Okay, so where do you so, want to start with this? Uh, I think I'm going to mainly concentrate on the wings with this guy. I might try a little bit on top of his head. Okay. Um, but I'm going to use the uh, both the bigger mottled and the less mottled on there and see what happens. I'm going to use it different on each wing Okay. Um, for different examples. So, so in here at the minute, mm -hmm. uh, we have... This is a mixture of uh, the brown and black ink from Vallejo again. There we go. Ooh, that's very interesting. Turn them all go. the way upside down for me. There we go. So we can do, then do it again mm -hmm. further down. Make sure that stencil's nice and tight to the model and, and try and only shoot it where it's actually on the model. Mm -hmm. There we go there. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I think I'll use a smaller size now just to see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So that's quite cool. Both of them work. Just depends on which one you want to do. Well, they actually work well together because you've got the bigger ones on the outside and then it gets smaller on the inside. I'll tell you what, we could use the mottled, yeah. the, the original, further in. Where uh, do we have one here? We do. But I've uh, and? misplaced the painted one. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> uh, well, let's just use it. Oh, right. Okay. I do like the idea of using multiple sizes on different locations. I, I do it on quite a lot of them actually. Um, we've done it already with the uh, some of the Eldar vehicles. We've used different ones in different places. Mm -hmm. So there we go. All three. All yeah, that looks really there. good. Looks quite cool. So you just keep doing it where, wherever it's going to fit nicely. Mm -hmm. Lightly laying it on. And then we can also, if we want to, use the same brown uh -huh. to shade <laughs> certain areas. Hooray for big miniatures. I do like the way that using the same colour is just softening that. Yeah, so now I've just put, I don't know if we saw it on the camera or not, but I just put a big shadow down the top of there. Yeah. Makes it really accentuate the curves on that model. Mm -hmm. So we we'll do the same thing on the other side with the uh, less modeled. And I'm noticing you're not afraid to, to just do a line, then put it down again, and then move again in on it. Well, yeah, you can layer it up, but it's not really going to matter if they don't perfectly line up you mm -hmm. just keep going um yeah so it means you don't have to cover an entire area in one shot of the brush no we're not going to really be able to um mm -hmm. 
What sort of surprises people when they see me bending these so much around the model? Well, they're, they're quite happy to do that. It's, it's if you were to really fold it over mm -hmm. like 90 degrees, it's not going to like it. But otherwise, it just flexes straight back yeah. into position. Yeah, so it's really robust material. Yeah. So I'm going to use the bigger size on the other size, yeah, on yeah. the other bits. Yeah, that works the, really see good. The, uh, so you can see the difference there. So the bigger size is obviously standing out quite a lot more. Mm -hmm. But I quite like that because no animal's patterning is 100% all the way through it. You do have lighter and darker parts of patterning on animals. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons the airbrush is so good for doing these creature features, is you get the nice organic fade out as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll just do that last bit there. Yeah. And yep. We can even do a little one at the top of that same section. Mm -hmm. So it looks quite interesting too. Yeah, definitely. So well, that's going with a dark uh, mm -hmm. pattern on there. We can mm -hmm. also do the same the other way around, go with a lighter pattern on there, see what that looks like. Yeah, if you want. So we've got this. Uh, this is mostly white, um, but also some bone colour in there too. Mm -hmm. And we'll just do the same sort of thing on the other side. And because the wings are already quite light, I'm going to make sure this is very strong, mm -hmm. kind of by layering it up. Oh wow, I really like that. Move that to about there, you can see it. Yeah, so it stands out quite a lot. Yeah, very nice. If we wanted to make this a bit more subtle, mm -hmm. uh, and not quite as stark mm -hmm. between the two, um, we can just go back in with this paint and just spray the whole area lightly. And um, where the scale, where the mottling was, it just gets a little bit lighter, but it helps blend it into the background of the skin tone more. Mm -hmm. so it's not quite as stark now. Yeah, it's not. It's sitting into it, not sitting on top of it. That's right. So that's another thing you can do if you want to. So we don't need to be afraid to overlap them because it's just going to make the pattern look more interesting. So mm -hmm. you have to line anything up. Um, you just want to try not to use the same part of the stencil over and over again and, over. and again and again on a line because you'll see the repeat. Yeah. So if you um, use the same, say inch or two inch square yeah. over and I probably over. have done that on camera because I'm trying to rush but <laughs> if you try not to do that uh, it will work better yeah. so that's that side and then the other side we'll do the uh, less mottled see what yeah, that sure. looks like there we can see if I can go in the camera really good different uh, different sides go on there no, if you, you use different strengths or different colors you'd have a different effect again mm -hmm. uh, you could layer them up with in combination with each other yeah it would look pretty cool yeah, I'm I'm really yeah. impressed with how those those came out between the the different layers, the different sizes, the different densities worked really well. Uh, definitely one to check out on the Kickstarter, guys. And if you have suggestions, make sure and get them in the comments below. I'm sure Brian will be on there checking them out. Yeah, he may even steal one of your ideas for the Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, my, me and him will move on here. We will see you guys again soon. So yeah, thank you. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.